Well, uh, with that, ladies and gentlemen, we are now going to move on to our session number two. Well, our second session is about Open Vino Toolkit DL Streamer, developing and deploying optimized video analytics. To present the same, we have with us Mr. Nilesha, who is a principal software engineer and solutions architect at Intel, focused on simplifying the development and deployment of media analytics pipelines. He received his bachelor's degree in computer science from Williams College and his master's degree from the University of Illinois at Urbana Campaign. Ms. Nina Malikar, ladies and gentlemen, is a product manager for Intel at Software Hub. Prior to this role, she was a product manager for Intel's OpenVINO Toolkit DL Streamer, video analytics serving and Intel user awareness service. She's also worked as a software engineer at Intel and developed libraries and use cases for contextual awareness. She has a master's degree in computer science from Portland State University. So with a huge round of virtual applause, ladies and gentlemen, let's welcome Mr. Nilesha and Ms. Nina Maldikar. Speakers kindly note, uh, we have about 30 minutes for the presentation. We will be taking the last 10 minutes for the questions from the audience. All right. Uh, can people see the screen? Uh, yes. W yes. Would it be possible for you to share your video as well, Nile? Um, what I would probably do with that at the end with the um, sure. questions and answers, if that's okay. All right. Okay. Um, all right. So, you know, thank you for the, the wonderful introduction, um, as well as the invitation to speak here. Um, it's a great conference. We're excited to be here. Um, as mentioned, my name is Neelay Shah. I'm a principal software engineer and media analytics solutions architect, um, along with Nina Maldikar. Uh, today, we're going to be talking about DL Streamer media analytics. Um, go kind of an overview of different tools we have um, and hopefully excite you and uh, get you to um, start building media analytics pipelines. So before we jump into DL Streamer itself, I want to set the stage in terms of what we mean by media analytics and media analytics pipelines. Uh, probably this is a uh, fairly uh, well-trodden territory, but when we think about media analytics, um, it's really going to be the analysis of audio and video uh, with generally neural networks, but also perhaps traditional machine learning and traditional computer vision to detect, classify, track, identify objects. And then one of the key things is to take those analyzed results and take actions on them. Right. So at the end of the day, our goal isn't just to um, provide information, but also make that um, information actionable. Right. When we talk about pipelines, um, again, similar to um, the previous conversation with Pipewire, what we're talking about um, is media analytics pipelines starting at media streams that are encoded um, and all the way through um, decoding color space conversion, inferencing, um, and then sending the results to a separate solution, um, either to the display or to a message bus, et cetera. Uh, one of the interesting things and things that we'll talk about throughout is that we go through multiple stages um, as well as different uh, IP blocks. And that can be both um, exciting for optimization, but also challenging uh, because it means you have to be an expert in multiple domains to really get optimized pipelines. Now, we're seeing an increased demand for media analytics, um, but it's also good to step back and kind of understand what's driving that demand, right? Why do we see that in the industry um, as well as kind of just from uh, a daily perspective? And when looking at it, um, one thing that we've seen quite a bit, you know, now that we can see inexpensive, widely deployed cameras, so there's cameras, um, People can get cameras very easily, web cameras, door cameras, et cetera. So there's lots of camera, a lot of data, right, that's available for people. And so obviously that uh, leads to reasons to process that data uh, and make use of it. Next, we see increasing edge to cloud networking capacity um, with 5G coming on board, um, as well as just general infrastructure improvements throughout. Since 2012, right, with the explosion of deep learning, um, we have algorithms, finally, that can actually um, 
may have great accuracy, right? We cracked that 80 to 90 percent accuracy barrier uh, for a lot of the computer vision tasks. Um, and those are only increasing with accuracy, um, you know, daily, right? So the research is active and given the amount of data, given the amount of research involved, um, these algorithms now become, uh, I would say, actionable, right? We can start to use them in production settings. And finally, last thing, and this is one of the things that we focus on at Intel, obviously, is that there's an increased amount of compute uh, capacity and options available. So we have very tiny, low power devices uh, like Raspberry Pis, for example, uh, to NUC class devices, which bring a little bit more power as well as um, integrated graphics to Xeon systems, um, to uh, FPGAs, right, in the cloud and discrete graphics as well. So not only do we have, you know, lots of data, got great networking, we have great algorithms, uh, but we also have a lot of different options in terms of compute. So along with that, you know, what are some of the different types of hardware that we've got? Uh, we've got a traditional CPU uh, and server farms. Um, this is what we classify as scalar uh, arithmetic, you know, kind of traditional um, architectures, traditional um, uh, processing, uh, but obviously getting more powerful with each generation. You've got GPUs, which are, you know, um, exemplify vector calculations, um, having both integrated graphics um, on Intel hardware as well as discrete graphics. You've got specialized accelerators, uh, vision accelerators, uh, what we call our VPUs, um, which further bring in uh, full support for optimizations for matrix calculations. And finally, you've got specialized hardware, right, um, where you can take FPGAs and custom build your algorithms directly into the hardware to get kind of full optimization um, for new algorithms that aren't yet supported as well um, with some of the um, other technologies. So quite an exciting time uh, for Intel, and I think the industry as well. As always, you know, opportunities bring challenges. So it's a growing market. Uh, one of the things we see is, you know, by 2025, and I guess this estimate really gets um, increased at almost every year, uh, but we're seeing something from uh, almost, uh, you know, three times uh, the market where we are now um, in the next five years. One of the interesting things about that, it really drives uh, cloud and edge compute. Um, you can do a lot of things in the cloud, uh, but when we talk about video processing, a lot of times for privacy, latency, and bath bandwidth reasons, uh, you like to do things at the edge as well. So it's going to be a paired solution. It's not going to be all at the edge or uh, all in the cloud. It also drives platforms. So we can see that full Medionics pipeline depends on the network, uh, IO, memory, media, and compute. So no single IP block. Um, it really takes an SOC kind of design and mentality um, to get true performance out of it. Now, all that's great, you know, great demand, great market, um, but there's still challenges, right? So while um, media analytics is a growing uh, space and things are getting, for getting easier, uh, things are still challenging to get the best performance. So it really requires multi, multi-domain, multi-year software expertise, you know, from media frameworks to AI frameworks. It requires multiple hardware expertise. You know, we talked about fixed function um, decoder blocks to programmable media, um, some of the memory technologies and memory sharing that um, Olivier even mentioned earlier, um, really requires you to know the details of that. And finally, Intel, while we're giving a lot of different options, uh, sometimes that also can be overload, right? So how do you, you know, best support a CPU uh, integrated graphics, discrete graphics and a VPU if you have it all together? So on the bottom right, we can kind of see some of the trade-offs and some of the um, optimizations that DLStreamer can bring. So looking at a kind of a naive, simple OpenCV prototype on a Tiger Lake system uh, or 11th gen core, you can get something like six streams with DLStreamer um, with a very few uh, changes um, and actually less code, uh, you can almost double that, right? And so again, this is not necessarily all pipelines, but this specific pipeline um, we looked at, um, just kind of see where we can improve uh, and help people build pipelines easier. So DL Streamer Media Analytics, um, what are the different things that we provide? So at the bottom, uh, Intel's providing the hardware, obviously. Um, on top of that, we have kind of low level libraries, um, including our VPL, which is our video processing library, um, and OpenVINO, which is our inference engine. 
And then DL Streamer really brings into that a set of um, GStreamer plugins that marry the two media and inferencing. And we'll talk about that in more detail as we go forward. Um, and finally, on top of that, we also provide uh, a pipeline service um, so that we can embed these pipelines in larger uh, microservice-based solutions. And we're going to talk about e each of these as we, as we go forward, well, starting with the deal, deal streamer elements. So deal streamer makes media analytics pipelines easy. So as you can see, this animation go through with only really eight lines of bash command line um, using the wonderful GSD launch um, application, kind of demo application, you can construct a pipeline uh, that does everything from decode through classification, through detection, all the way into display. Uh, very simple. You now, again, the same type of application um, without GStreamer, without that kind of framework, um, is going to be something like 2,000 lines of code. Right? And even then, it may not be as optimized uh, as you would get with the GStreamer pipeline um, and the DL Streamer elements. So what is DL Streamer, right? So we've talked a lot about it. And at its base, it's a media analytics framework. Um, it's a set of optimized extensions to GStreamer to bring in that um, uh, analytics capabilities. I like to think of it as essentially the runtime engine um, that's the pipeline equivalent to the OpenVINO inference engine, uh, which, again, optimizes um, neural networks for Intel hardware. And we'll see some more details on that going forward. Um, applications, you know, we can see that uh, can use the GStreamer APIs just as they would any normal GStreamer application, um, but add in uh, additional elements for inferencing, object tracking, overlay, um, and utility elements in order to publish results. And we'll see some examples of that as well. So what is OpenVINO, right? So we've talked a lot about um, Media Analytics, we've talked about DL Streamer. Um, OpenVINO is the optimized inference engine um, that Intel provides. It's open source. It's optimized across different types of Intel hardware. It provides um, essentially the first level of platform portability for models uh, through its IR. So it's an intermediate representation. Uh, you take a model, you can optimize it, you get the intermediate representation. That then can be optimized through many different types of um, hardware uh, transparently to the application. So the user application takes that same model, can run that on a CPU, uh, can run it on a GPU, can run a VPU, can run an FPGA. And underneath, um, within the runtime, you have optimizations that are targeted for each of those pieces of hardware. Now GStreamer, uh, we have optimized inference with OpenVINO. GStreamer is our optimized media. Uh, Obviously, I think a lot of people are already familiar with it, so we don't have to go into too much detail, but it's a, an open source framework for processing video and audio. It provides the pipeline management, the pipeline runtime out of the box. And one of the things we really love about it is the huge ecosystem uh, with over 250 plugins, and that's probably uh, a lower estimate, uh, with over a thousand elements, um, whatever types of sources and filters and syncs that you'd like to um, use in your media applications uh, are probably already supported by GStreamer. And so we leverage uh, the open source community and provide our elements as open source as well, um, really to get uh, the best out of both the hardware optimizations for Intel um, as well as the um, support of the open source community. Okay, and now what I'm gonna do is actually go through a set of demos and just show you how easy it is. I think a lot of times it's easier to see uh, rather than me have me talk about it. Uh, so I'm gonna go ahead and, and flip through a series of demos that I recorded earlier, uh, but you can see the simplicity. So here is gonna be a basic uh, video playback. It has decode, video conversion. Uh, it's gonna have display, uh, but no analytics. As you can see me mistype as well into my Emacs buffer. And then uh, wait for a little bit of time where I'm trying to get my recording set up. And in a second, you should see uh, the window appear. All right. So pretty simple. 
a few lines of shell script, uh, we get a full uh, running video playback. And you can see these two people, uh, they're very good at what they do and they're gonna go through different emotions, right? And we're gonna detect those in the next one. All right, so now how do we bring in analytics? So we take those stages and then we add in our neural network models, right? So in this case, what we're gonna be doing is showing how to do detection and then secondary classification. So first we're gonna detect where the faces are. And then for each face, uh, we'll go through secondary classifications to understand what the um, emotions, in this case, of the pipeline will be showing um, of those faces as well, and then have the same uh, display pipeline. So I'll stop, pause for a moment here. You can see um, a little bit more complicated. Uh, you've got your file source as well coming in um, the same as before. But now after decoding, we've added in the detection. Uh, so just as you would see from uh, the pipeline graph, you've got uh, the detection model followed by a classification model. And again, that's gonna operate on detected objects uh, from the initial classification. Uh, watermarking, which is where we put the bounding boxes on, and then um, re-encoding for display. There we go. And you can see this time I'm I'm use tap complete so I don't uh, miss type automatically. All right. So again, not really that much more complicated in terms of what you would have to code or what you'd build into the pipeline. Uh, but now you've got uh, face detections as well as uh, emotion detection. Uh, built into the GStreamer pipeline. And we'll see them go sad in a second. So then we'll go ahead and move on. So one of the great things about um, GStreamer is not only do you have video, uh, video processing, but you've also got audio processing. And I think one of the unique features of GStreamer compared to, let's say, traditional uh, machine learning frameworks is you also got that notion of time. Right, so in a lot of times in other um, frameworks like OpenCV and things like that, you tend to lose time as soon as you you know get into frames. Um, but because GStreamer is based, you know, primarily for a playback and synchronization, uh, you can do things like synchronize both an audio and video detection uh, together. Right, and we'll see that in the next slide as well. Uh, so what I'm going to do here now again a slightly more complicated line um, that's going to have two branches to it. Uh, the first is going to do the audio detection and then send the results to uh, a name pipe. Then on the other branch, we're going to do the video detection and at the same time, read in from that same name pipe all of the audio detections. And whenever there's an audio detection, we're going to place a new bounding box on the screen um, so you can see both video and audio detection at the same time. Ah, one other thing I wanted to mention, this is the, the full code uh, for getting the um, audio events. So this is the case where we're reading from uh, the name pipe, getting the last audio event. If there's an audio event that's corresponding to the same time frame as the video frame, uh, we place an additional uh, bounding box on. Hopefully the audio is coming through, but if not, you'll see it visually bark and then you'll see the uh, audio detection happening at the same time. All right. Okay. So now that we've talked a little bit about uh, basic pipelines and stringing together um, elements at the 
DL streamer level. Uh, the next thing I wanted to talk about um, was how you incorporate those into larger solutions. And that's where our video analytics serving uh, pipeline service uh, comes into play. So while, you know, I talked a lot at the beginning about media analytics pipelines, when you use the word pipeline in general, uh, it tends to uh, mean a lot of different things to a lot of people. <laughs> and so when we talk about traditional data processing, uh, a data pipeline is really more something uh, along the fact of um, extract, transform, log. So large chains of processing, large chains of um, event generation from multi um, dimensional data, uh, different sensors, different log files, et cetera. So in that scenario, the whole video analytics pipeline that we talked about is really just another piece of data that feeds into a larger system. And so you need a way to package those pipelines and make them reusable um, so that you can fit them into larger frameworks like EdgeX, Foundry, um, like Azure, Azure IoT, um, like Greengrass as well, right? So all of these microservice frameworks or cloud native frameworks um, provide the messaging infrastructure, provide orchestration infrastructure, uh, but you still need a way to plug your pipelines into that, um, hopefully in a way that you don't have to redo it for each um, different integration. And that's where our video analytics serving uh, component comes in. So while well, GStreamer and DLStreamer is really about making media analytics pipelines easier. Video analytics serving sits on top of that and really tries to make the media analytics solutions easier, providing a simple dockerized um, REST interface uh, to kick off pipelines, um, to serve them, to stop them, to get the status from them, um, and send the results to specific areas. So what does video analytics serving have in it? Um, Again, first and foremost, it's a Dockerized environment. So we provide scripts to create uh, customized media analytics containers with the runtime dependencies required for both OpenVINO as well as from media acceleration. You could define your pipeline definitions just as you would with GST launch. Uh, so there's no need to, to recode or code your own GStreamer application in that sense. Um, you can use it just from a templating mechanism. Um, and then again, we have a simple API to discover, start, stop, and um, configure pipelines uh, when you launch them. And so again, all about deployment, all about how you take those media analytics pipelines and deploy them into larger solutions. And so we're going to start with just showing what a, a build for a Docker container would look like within VA serving. Um, here we have a model downloading uh, to take models from OpenVINO's model zoo, provide those ready to use. And so that's kind of all the, the, the build would take. Now we're going to go into run. So you go ahead and start your application up. You can see it's going to be loading the different pipelines. In this case, we've got object tracking, action recognition, um, multiple different pipelines. And we're going to go ahead and start our client, which is kind of a simple uh, REST-based client. And the first thing we do is just list the pipelines. And you can see we've got, again, audio detection uh, with background classification, uh, just a video decode pipeline, object detection, different types uh, that correspond to different models. So as you're deploying your solution, you can basically specify which camera stream, uh, which pipeline that you want to run on that, either be object detection or action recognition, for example, um, and then easily um, change that as you go. Okay, uh, the next one, we'll see actual an object detection pipeline. Okay, so first we'll run it without any kind of visualization, just to see the metadata come out. You can see the timestamps going as well as the detections. The 
and I will do the same pipeline, um, but be able to show you um, that with a visualization right on top of it. So basically we're, we're executing the pipeline through the service and then redirecting the output uh, to an RTSP stream. And now you can see the people walking through the hallway, and one person running. And next we're gonna show, um, finally taking the same video and now doing um, full line counting with it. And let me go. Okay. Yeah. So just a moment about object line crossing. So in this case, we're going to show a more complicated example where we're going to send in a REST request that also has defined uh, lines uh, in order to be able to detect when certain objects have crossed those lines and basically count those things. All right. So showing how do you inject some simple logic within a uh, video analytics pipeline. Um, this is again using our Python API um, to make it kind of simple for people. And you'll see as events coming through as well as the visualization of that as well. And in this case, now you see the different lines kind of, um, and that counts when anybody has crossed those lines. So the person just ran across real fast and you can see we counted them at the bottom. Um, I'm gonna scroll up for a second and see the actual events as they come through the metadata. So you can see when the line was crossed, the hallway bottom, for example, um, what the total count was at that point, um, as well as the different uh, other um, lines basically okay uh, so with that i'm going to actually turn it over now uh to nina Malzikar, who's going to go over um, some of our additional developer capabilities um, that make it even easier to deploy full solutions hey everyone this is nina um, so we are we are in this world of rapid prototyping and rapid development where the developers want to get started very quickly and get their uh, products to market very quickly. And they want to use various open source components uh, that integrate well with each other and reduce the development time. So VS Serving and the Streamer are great tools for rapid development, but uh, that is just one part of the puzzle, right? There are other components that you have to think about when you are developing the complete application, like the uh, deep learning model, your storage option, communication option, and many others. So to solve this problem, we have uh, we have Intel has come up with Intel Developer Catalog, uh, which provides you a one stop uh, for all your the prototyping and deployment uh, development needs. Uh, you can find various uh, reference implementation and software packages on uh, Intel Developer Catalog. Download the package and uh, build it and run it uh, with the tutorials and getting started guide that is provided on the uh, developer catalog. And particularly, I'm going to talk about the Edge software offerings, which includes this DL streamer uh, reference implementation. So the purpose uh, here is to accelerate time to market, reduce your development cost, and provide you with a, ro a robust Edge portfolio. Uh, I have a link here at the bottom, which you can try afterwards. Uh, the next slide. And I'm, I'm going to just walk you through one of the reference implementation to give you an idea of uh, what it is like. Uh, so this is a reference implementation for traffic management system. For each reference implementation, you will have an overview, a getting started guide, architecture diagram, uh, target system requirements, uh, and way to download the artifacts or collateral for that reference implementation, steps to build and run it, and troubleshooting guide, and also a link to our support forum where you can ask all these questions and get answers to your problems. Next slide.
to talk about this particular intelligent traffic management uh, reference implementation uh, i will i will uh, also show a demo of this afterwards but this reference implementation gives you uh, a complete solution which can detect vehicles and pedestrians and bikes uh, at the intersection uh, it helps to track these objects across uh, successive frames uh, it determines the trajectory and speed of the object and it also has algorithms to determine the collisions, identify the collisions or near miss scenarios. Uh, and with all of this uh, in, uh, algorithms and machine learning models built into this, it also provides a real-time visualization uh, dashboard for all the cameras that are connected to this system. So this is a complete uh, solution and this is just an example uh, of it. Um, yeah, next slide is good, Nina. But we have similar reference implementation, which give you a complete solution. So this is a quick uh, architecture block diagram, which shows you that uh, the solution takes input feed in form of camera, or it, you can also pass video files if you're testing it. And then it prepares the pipeline uh, with the DL streamer and uses the DL streamer uh, OpenVINO inference engine to get the results from the pipeline for, on video object detection. Uh, performs tracking and collision detection, and then sends those uh, results to InfluxDB uh, Docker container for uh, storage, and then uh, can also visualize those results to Grafana uh, Docker container uh, on the dashboard. And uh, it, uh, it, uh, it uses the open model zoo uh, models from OpenVINO Toolkit, DL Streamer, and Inference Engine from OpenVINO Toolkit. Next slide is actually a demo. So Mila, if you hit enter, it will start the demo. So this shows the, yeah, this shows the dashboard that you get uh, with the reference implementation. You log in in this dashboard uh, with the default login ID and then you can change the password. And once you are in, you can select the intelligent traffic management dashboard that shows you uh, the location of your various cameras based on latitude, longitude, on left, you can see the statistics of collision detected, vehicle detected, etc. And at the bottom, you can see the details of the events that were detected. And then you also have option to click on uh, any of the cameras and see the live feed and what's going on there. So in this demo, we are using the files, uh, but you can have the actual camera connected there. So when you click on the camera, you can see the video uh, from that camera and the result of the inference uh, or object detected uh, in that video. And you can also zoom in on the particular camera and then you can see the statistics for that uh, video feed on the left side with the vehicles detected, pedestrian detected and collisions detected. And you can also see the FPS count here that shows the performance of uh, uh, the system overall. All right. So here you can see all the person detected and their tracking IDs on the top. Uh, so we are tracking this through tracking algorithm. And then the next video. So this, uh, this camera is showing the video uh, for collision detection. So you can see it detects the vehicles as it is approaching, the trajectory of the vehicle, the speed of the vehicle, and uh, it can detect the collision uh, once it happens. And this, this, this information can be used in various ways to send maybe emergency response sooner uh, to the place where you have detected the collision. Uh, and it also identifies uh, near misses or the collisions that could have happened. So that can also be used to uh, learn about the dangerous intersections or the driver's uh, habits and such things.
and so then one more cool feature about this dashboard is you can also view all the streams at one time so there was a button on the right corner which uh, when you click it shows all of your cameras in one screen so you can see this uh, view that shows you all the intersection where you are monitoring so that's that's just the one of the examples of the reference implementation we have and there are many more such use cases available through uh, intel developer catalog edge software uh, i think this is replaying you can go to next So I want to leave you with some uh, resources. We already talked about DL Streamer, VS Serving, and Developer Catalog. Another import, uh, valuable resource could be Dev Cloud, which, uh, which is where Intel has provided you various hardware that you can access uh, in cloud. So you can just take any reference implementation from Developer Catalog and run it directly on cloud. So that can get you started within no time without having your own hardware or anything. Uh, and then finally, the link to OpenMino Toolkit uh, that is used for inferencing on Intel platforms. That's uh, that's pretty, uh, the end of the presentation. Uh, and I think we are open for questions now. Thank you so much, uh, Nina, and thank you so much, Nile. We do have uh, not a few, just quite a few questions now. Uh, let's start with the first one. Uh, the question is. What is required to optimize or accelerate a given model with underlying architecture capabilities? For example, few things if you want to accelerate on FPGA. So I, mean, I think uh, FPGA um, would definitely be kind of custom to specific models um, and specific bit streams, right? Um, more generally, um, what OpenVINO provides is sort of optimized implementations of different layer types. So if your model is constructed um, from common layers, um, let's say uh, specific uh, for like mobile net SSD, um, what happens is as you convert that into an IR and then run it on the engine, uh, specific layers of that will be optimized kind of in a almost like a library of uh, layer implementations for the different hardware. Um, so that's one of the ways uh, we get some of the optimization. The other ways um, is there are certain optimization tricks um, that get uh, done automatically by uh, OpenVINO. Um, so dropping layers, um, reducing uh, at precision uh, as well from quantization can be done um, to increase performance. Okay. Uh, well, there's a follow-up question. Does DL stream allow to add custom classifiers? Uh, yes. Okay. So one of the elements we didn't talk about today is called uh, GVA inference, um, which basically lets you take any OpenVINO model that would be operating on images typically, um, run the inference on it, and then you can add your own uh, post-processing or pre-processing to that in front or behind it as well. Okay, uh, there's another question, but this is a two-part question. The first part is, what is the GStreamer version supported by OpenVINO? Uh, with the latest um, OpenVINO uh, release, we support uh, 118 um, by default. Uh, so we package uh, that uh, compiled for Intel. Um, it really, you know, because of GStreamer's um, binary compatibility, uh, it should be uh, both forward and backwards compatible, but um, 118 is what we ship with. Uh, the second part of the question is, any open no media analytics use cases for computer vision, like augmented reality and extended reality? I uh, guess, uh, definitely. Um, there are different samples um, and applications that are doing that. Um, also doing super resolution and segmentation are other common use cases that are being done. Okay. Uh, okay. There's one question from the demo that we just saw. In the traffic management demo, is inference happening on the edge? Yes, indeed. The inference is happening on the edge device uh, and uh, that the camera is connected to. Okay. And I think we have one final question. And this is what is the minimum memory footprint to use DL Streamer? Any edge devices already having this framework? Um, it's a good question. I don't know what the minimum would be. I think it's it's fairly light in terms of requirements. I know that um, people have deployed uh, DL Streamer and G Streamer on Raspberry Pi type devices. So um, 
I think the the bare requirements aren't aren't large. Um, yeah, and so I would say kind of it's a uh, it's still pretty lightweight overall. Yeah, and I, I want to answer about the edge devices. So there are uh, OEM devices and dev kits that are available with the uh, vision package from Edge uh, Intel developer catalog, and it includes DL streamers. So you can check those hardware boxes, and uh, those are the edge devices that already come with the uh, DL streamer. All right, uh, I think that's all the questions we have, and it has indeed been a very, very educative session. Thank you so much, Nila, and thank you so much. Nina for you, yes. sharing the time and taking the time out to share uh, about Open We Know with us. I'm pretty sure a lot of people out there are going to be looking at this because we've already had so many questions. Once again, thank you so much for gracing us here at VLDE Summit 2021. Thank you.